Joining us in the studio today are Hezi Kugler, a lecturer on public policy at Haifa University and a supporter of Hillary Clinton, and Ariel Iluz, a, a Republican Party consultant. Both are here to make their case for their candidates. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Good afternoon. So let's begin. Practically every presidential candidate since 1967 has promised to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, but has not. What makes Trump or Clinton's promises any more trustworthy? I believe that there's a lot more credibility to what uh, Hillary Clinton says. Uh, she doesn't uh, have a habit of reversing her position on the basis of a whim from day to day without respect to whether or not the embassy is actually coming from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Uh, the fact that people make certain promises in election campaigns is a worldwide phenomenon. We're pretty familiar with that in Israel as well. So I think really the, the real question is who's going to be consistent, broadly speaking, on the policies that they're talking about? Of course, first of all, you have to be able to understand what the person's policies are in the first place. I think on that as well, we have a lot more coherence certainly on foreign policy matters, but also on other ones as well, uh, from Clinton as opposed to Trump. And I believe that we are pretty clear on what Clinton's policies will be vis-a-vis -vis Israel. After all, she was a Secretary of State for four years, so we have a good idea of how she'll act. With respect to Trump, what do we call it in cards, in the game of cards? It's kind of the joker. Who knows? Now, what would you say to that, Ariel? Well, I think that uh, the stamina and the, the, the ability of Trump that we see now to stand against 16 other Republicans and win them. And uh, so it, it shows, it gives us a clue about his personality, about his, uh, maybe about his biggest move that he already did, like win other uh, 16 Rep Republicans. And the next thing that he will do, and he promised, and I be really believe that he will do it, which is uh, to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And by the way, uh, 25 or 30 years of uh, career, of political career of Hillary Clinton shows the opposite, my friend. It, it shows that she had a lot of promises and a lot of words, but not a lot of receives. So I'm not sure that she, she can do it. I, I don't think that she said that she's going to do it. And as far as I know, she could move the embassy to West Jerusalem, but she didn't. So for me, it's a question how she sees Jerusalem in her eyes. Maybe she sees Jerusalem as a settlement. Maybe she sees a problem with Jerusalem. I don't see the problem why our best friend, America, can see it, our right to choose what city is our capital, like any other state. So for me, this is the question. Hillary is the joker. All right, now let's talk about uh the issue of anti-Semitism. Now, uh, Trump has shown support for uh, the Jewish people and his love for the Jewish people, but at the same time, there are a lot of anti-Semites and uh, racists among his supporters who are speaking out against Jews. How do you respond to Trump not condemning these people and allowing them to continue uh, you know, their libel? I'll say very clear, I'm not sure they're gonna vote for Trump. Uh, I won't be surprised if they will vote for Hillary, by the way. Because they say, by the way, they, they say it's been years that they say they will vote for Republicans. It's not the first time. I uh, check it. And I think that uh, those people, you know, no one can control the voters, but uh, Trump shouldn't be, you know, he needs every vote. He can't just say, I'm against them because they said they will support me. They said they will support him, but uh, behind the scenes, they can vote for anyone. So I'm not sure. And, but it's by not outwardly condemning, you know, that, that type of speech, that type of hate speech, in a way supporting it? I mean, what would you say to that, Hezi? It's a lot more than uh, condemning or not condemning hate speeches. Trump has based his campaign on sowing discord and divisiveness uh, based upon actually appealing to uh, racism and discrimination. I mean, that is how he beat his other 16 opponents, by appealing to the baser instincts. And still, Ben of, Carson of, is next to him. Of to, uh, ben Carson is a, it's a different story, uh, but then let's say 15. <laughs> uh, and he, uh, I mean, by ostracizing uh, and, and demonizing and demeaning uh, immigrants just for the fact of their uh, ethnic backgrounds, this is out and out racism. His own leaders in the Republican Party have uh, characterized statements that have been made by him. In particular, for example, what he said about uh, an American-born judge 
who have parents who were born in Mexico as simply the definition of racism. So it's not surprising that people in the United States who are bigoted, and unfortunately there are too many people still in the United States who are bigoted, it's not surprising that Donald Trump appeals to the bigots. Now let's talk a little bit about the issue of immigration and refugees. Now um, there's a lot of uh, discourse over bringing more Muslim immigrants from Syria, refugees from Syria and from the Middle East into the United States. And Trump has been very strongly against that for the most part, whereas Clinton has uh, supported almost increasing. And we're also seeing from Israel uh, a lack of interest or desire to bring these refugees in as well. But for American Jews, many of which who have uh, you know, parents and grandparents that were once refugees themselves, that type of policy that Trump has been fighting for is kind of divisive, right? So what would you say to the people, the Jewish people who are considering voting for Hillary Clinton or for Trump and are worried about that? I think, and Donald Trump has said that, uh, that the state without the borders is not a state. And by the way, I, I can ask the same thing because Hillary Clinton is now part of the Obama administration. Why, if she said that she willing to take the, the Syrian into the United States, why she didn't do it yet? She could. Why she didn't open the borders yet? She could. So for me, it's very, you know, I can't understand that. And I, I, I didn't understand you compared something about the, 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 ref, the Jewish refugees, because, because there is well, no- Well, back in, back in World War II, right? During yeah. the Holocaust. So I think there is no place to uh, compare between those kind of refugees to the Syrian and, and, or other murder uh, refugees in the world, because back the time, there wasn't Israel. Now there is Israel. There is United States, and, and there is the relationship between them. Now I expect for something different than our friends. So, and I don't think that Donald Trump uh, mean to something different. He's just talking about the economic issues, and he's talking, of course, about the demographic issues. But for me, when I see Hillary promise, I just ask myself why she didn't do anything yet. She could. So. Well, first of all, we need to remind ourselves that uh, Hillary Clinton has not been the Secretary of State for the last four years. So uh, the policies with respect to immigration over the last few years certainly are not something that she could have done anything about in terms of actually implementing policy. But beyond that, you know, I can't help but remember way back when, when Menachem Begin got up and said, we in Israel are going to take in the boat people from Vietnam. That's how the Vietnamese came to Israel, specifically because of our own heritage, where we had no place to go. They wasn't terrorists. I, who knows what people would have been in there? Do you really think that the vast majority of the people, the common people who are suffering in these countries, who knows Germany are, are, ter knows are terrorists? Knows. Look, you know, way back, that's the kind of claims that used to be uh, made. I have to say, even against the Jews who used to flow into the United States as if they're socialists, communists, going to undermine uh, America. Had my own ancestors, ancestors, great-grandparents, not been allowed to come into the United States, more than likely I wouldn't have been here today. I also, they also would have gone to the gas chambers. The United States is built upon the concept of the, send us the persecuted, send us the people who have no other place to go. It doesn't mean to let them in en masse without reviewing who may be there. There are means to review them. Clinton has said that she would do that. I have no doubt that she will do that. But to close off the borders en masse, just because of the ethnic background of the people who are coming in, is so anti-American uh, as to be unfathomable. It goes hand in hand with what we talked about beforehand, a person who is inherently bigoted and appeals to the baser instincts of some people who are still thinking along those lines in the United States. I doubt that they'll be the majority. Now let's talk a little bit about the polls. Uh, you know, we have the election coming up in less than 48 hours, and still there are a lot of divisions within Israeli American voters as to who they're going to be voting for. Polls are showing different things. One day Trump is winning, one day Clinton is winning. What do you guys think that we can expect to happen from Israel? Okay, I'll start. Um, well, first of all, I think that uh, polls have shown very, very consistently that most people in Israel, forgetting if they're Israeli Americans or not, but most people in Israel uh, support uh, Clinton uh, as opposed to Trump. 
Uh, and I also think that we have seen that most polls show that American Jews support Clinton over Trump. You put the two together and you can expect that most people who live in Israel and who are eligible to vote in the United States, by definition, will end up voting for Clinton. I think that will be the majority of the people. Uh, I think it's, first of all, because they identify the fact that uh, the interests of the state of Israel will be best served uh, by a President Clinton. And secondly, the values that we share in Israel uh, with the United States will be best represented, by, best represented by President Clinton, including because of the reasons I just mentioned earlier. Uh, I don't think that uh, Jews, whether in Israel or in America, can identify uh, with the kind of rhetoric and positions that have been put placed front and center by Donald Trump. So, you know, the only issue is that we're seeing a much stronger Republican presence here on the ground in Israel when it comes to getting more uh, voters to get out and vote, obviously, for Trump. What would you say about that, Elus? Why, why are we seeing uh, more of a presence from the Republicans versus the Democrats? I think it's connected to the last election here in Israel because uh, just like the last election here in Israel, the entire media was recruiting to, uh, to the left wing. And at the, same, at the day of the election, we saw this uh, surprise. By the way, I wouldn't surprise at all because now I see that the Americans start to understand maybe that they're smarter than the, their media. You know, you can see that Hillary even, she can't even, she can't even fill a room. She needs uh, uh, stars like uh, Beyonce, like uh, Pharrell Williams, like Jay-Z, like, uh, to fill a, a room. And I can understand uh, those people in the United States that doesn't feel the same passion like she needs uh, to, to show. Because when you see Hillary Clinton now, it seems like she lost her base. It doesn't look, well, Hezi talked, and it, it seems like he talked in about a, a winning campaign or winning race, and it doesn't look like a winning race. It looks like Hillary start to understand that maybe the ground under her... Uh, uh, under her feet. Under her feet, <laughs> sorry for that. That the ground under her feet start to shake, and maybe uh, it's because the, the FBI investigation because I think now uh, the people in the United States start to understand that Donald Trump can do things. Donald Trump, it's not just words. Donald Trump, it's not just promises. He have a record of success, record of businesses. And that's what they need. Because in Israel, we're talking about issues and not about the economic issues like the, the Americans. And this is the important thing for them. We see different the, the, the election in Israel. The Israeli look at the election and they, they think about Jerusalem, about United Jerusalem, about the embassy in Jerusalem. But the Americans care about their job, about losing their job. The American cares about, uh, yeah, like I said, the economic uh, issues. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Tomorrow is the last day before the election, so uh, we'll have some more representatives back here in the studio. And, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.